the founding principles of our state and our nation. And this bill recognizes that important principle by ensuring that our churches can stay open during the most difficult times when we need the church the most. Unlike governors of many states like New York and California, our governor, Henry McMaster, did not order our churches closed during the pandemic. Now we will get to have We're going to get to have Governor McMaster for four more years. And, uh, but after that, and we hope we have our, another governor that's behind us over here for another eight years. But nevertheless, um, one day, uh, we may have a governor that doesn't understand our religious liberty like the one we have now. And so this law ensures that our governor's legacy will continue in our state. There are a lot of people to thank uh, for this bill who worked hard for it. Uh, Representative uh, and Pastor Richie Yao, who could not be here today. Uh, he's with Vacation Bible School and he couldn't, couldn't get here, but uh, he wanted to be here and he, he, he's one that gave me that quote about religious liberty I read earlier. So it's very important. We have a lot of family caucus members from our house here today uh, and the Senate, and they worked hard for this bill and I'll try to mention a few of them. If I leave somebody out, y'all forgive me. Uh, we've got Representative Rita Allison here. Um, Randy Ligon, Representative Ligon, Representative Mike Burns. Um, Travis Moore, Representative Travis Moore from right here in Spartanburg. Uh, Representative Doug Gilliam from Union. Representative Dennis Moss. Uh, from York, uh, Representative Roger Nutt uh, from this area too, uh, Representative Bobby Cox, um, Patrick Haddon, Representative Haddon, he changed my tire on the highway one day. <laughs> I, I got to always recognize him no matter where I am. Uh, Representative Josiah Magnuson is here. And, uh, and I, I probably left out some and we have two senators here. I know Senator Garrett, and oh, Ashley, Representative Ashley Cranston, how did I leave you out? I'm sorry. Stephen Long. Representative Stephen Long. All right. <laughs> and it may be more, but uh, Representative, I mean, Senator Josh Kimball and Billy Garrett helped get this thing through the Senate. So they were invaluable in the effort that we had. So uh, thank you all for being here today. And uh, uh, Dr. Hamlet will be next. Thank you, Representative. We're, uh, we're so glad that you're here, and I just want to say on behalf of our church family how glad and appreciative we are of you being here today. Uh, we're grateful for this bill, but I'll tell you one of the blessings about South Carolina from a pastoral perspective. Uh, I never had a great deal of fear that the governor was going to close our churches, okay, in the beginning, because I knew, I knew where he was. But at the same time, when we dealt with something that we'd never seen before, it was also appropriate for the legislature to come behind with his support and to make this official so that we don't have to live with that fear as other people in the country do. So we're grateful for that. And my prayer is that we as pastors and we as churches uh, will take that responsibility and that uh, because religious liberty is so important and it's so deeply ingrained in South Carolina, we're just grateful for what this bill uh, is going to do and how it ensures that. And we're grateful to the governor, to the legislature, uh, and I know that I speak for all of our pastors when I say we're delighted and grateful uh, for that and glad that you're here today to celebrate celebrating that with us. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. And as Representative Long pointed out, this is his House district and I, this is my Senate district. I'm Senator Josh Grimble from Spartanburg. Glad to have you here. Uh, doctor, this is proof I am at church today since I am a member of this church. Uh, we've heard through the years that many men throughout history have played God. But lacking God's experience, most of them have become politicians. Now, I can say that because I'm in politics, right? It's just like if you can't make Baptist jokes, Dr. Hamlet, if you're not Baptist. So, but in all seriousness, there is a truth to that, that we saw throughout the pandemic that, as we've heard before, don't ever let a good crisis go to waste. And those that want to shut down churches or silence the role of God in public life use the pandemic as a great tool to do that. 
We had radical blue state governors that said you could go to Costco, but not to church. You could go to Walmart, but not to worship. And that's reprehensible. That's anathema to the American experience. As Reagan put it once, the First Amendment's there not to protect people of faith from, or the government from people of faith, but people of faith from the government. It's there to protect against government tyranny. Amen. And that's why this bill is so important. As we've already heard today from Representative McCravey, Governor Henry McMaster, who I have the honor of introducing in just a moment, is a man who believes in faith. This, this is not the first time he's ever stepped foot in a church. He's not a guy that was going to shut down our churches. We saw governors in other states do it, and God forbid a future governor in this state may do it. So what we're trying to do through this legislation is ensure that whenever somebody like Henry McMaster is not governor, that no future governor who gets a little power crazy during a national emergency shuts down these houses of worship because it's critical and essential that we can come here, especially in the darkest times. And so that's why this bill is being put into law today. Now, Governor McMaster, of course, needs no introduction, but this is an area he's naturally at home in Spartanburg. Do y'all remember the name Howard Dean? Do y'all remember that name back in 2004? Governor of Vermont ran for president, lost pretty bad. And they asked him during one of the debates, they said, Gov Governor, what's your favorite book in the New Testament? And he said, Job. <laughs> Which is proof he's never opened a Bible. Well, the 117th governor of South Carolina knows that it's the book of Job, and that's in the Old Testament. And it's my honor to introduce our great governor, Governor Henry Dargan McMaster. Thank you, Josh. I too am happy to be here. And this, this is sort of my district. This is the state of South Carolina, for which I am <laughs> a proud governor, and I, I appreciate you. It really is an honor to be the governor of these people, and I know that Lieutenant Governor Everett feels the same way. I couldn't be more proud than I am of the people of South Carolina. And before we get to this bill, I, I need to say that the, these big businesses from all over the world that are looking for a place to invest hundreds of millions of dollars are coming to South Carolina. Randy, I see Randy Page over there. They're coming to South Carolina and it's because there are a lot of things. We're lowering taxes. We have, we're a right to work state. We've got mountains, we've got oceans, we've got beaches, we've got streams, we've got water, we've got every, everything. As I said, it's a right to work state and we have believe in the, in the constitution. But the main thing that they come here for is because of the people. And we started back in 1670. If you don't count the French and the Spanish, you were here temporarily before that. Started in 1670. We've been through every war, every hurricane, everything. Been in every war. Uh, and and here, we, here we are, uh, right on the edge of D-Day here again. We, um, we've been through all of it. And we've survived. We have a strong military tradition and a strong Judeo-Christian tradition. And when you put those two traditions and those people in paradise and then put them through every challenge there is, you end up with people like in this room that these people from around the world can see clearly. These are the kind of people we want to be with. And that's why it's happening. There's not another reason. Well, for the pandemic, uh, thank you very much, Preacher, for being on the Accelerate SC with us. We got, I think we got advice and guidance and information from everybody that you see standing here. We're trying to figure out how to work our way through what to do. It's been mentioned there's a new situation. But we knew one thing, and that's for sure, is that we have, oh, I got to mention this, Peggy sends her regards. Uh, now, we, we, uh, we do go to the First Presbyterian Church in Columbia, where I've gone all my life and sit in the same place, by the way. But now, Peggy grew up in First Baptist, so we got married on Main Street. Now, Dr. Allison Walken has worked just fine. It's been, uh, it's been 44 years, and I'll, I'll tell you this, and I was telling somebody that Peggy and I celebrated our 44th wedding anniversary, and they said, well, that, that's good. He said, but we, we've celebrated our 58th. He said, well, that really is something. He says, yeah, we know the secret to a long, happy marriage. I said, well, what is the secret to a long, happy marriage? He says, every week, wife and I, we find a nice, quiet place, a nice, romantic restaurant, go out and eat. I go on Tuesday, she goes on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> but here came the pandemic, and we looked at the Constitution, and the Constitution says a lot of things. 
And I always tell the children, the U.S. Constitution does not give you any rights. The U.S. Constitution protects your God-given rights against the government intrusion. And when they created the Constitution, the 13 states, to create a new government that did not exist, they said, what powers are we going to give it? They said, we don't want it to be like the king, so we will split it into three parts, legislative, judicial, and executive, and we'll split the legislative into two parts, and then we'll make a list as to what that, the laws that that legislature can pass that the executive will enforce and the judicial will interpret if necessary. Creating a navy, an army, taxes, although there weren't direct taxes at that time, no income tax, just tariffs and other things, to have a standard weights and measures and money because all the states had different types of currency. Things where one size fits all, and that is all the things that the states, the people, just like people here today, gave to that new national government because they did not want to have their rights intruded upon. And they passed that constitution. But some of the people in the room said, that's not enough. We want to be sure. So that's where the, there were 13 amendments presented, 10 of them passed. And as you know, one of them is freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of association. So there you have it. Not only does the Constitution not give the government, the national government, any power to do those things, not mentioned, but also expressly gives protects that right of religion that we have. Now, why some of the governors around the country could not understand that simple fact is something that is just beyond me. And I ought to say that a lot of the mandates that have been attempted to be enforced by the national government have been found to be unconstitutional as well. So it is important that we take a stand when necessary. And this, this law, makes it clear where we stand in South Carolina and also goes a little farther and provides for penalties if someone intrudes on these rights, our right of religion. I could not believe reading in the news in some states they were arresting preachers, they were emptying sanctuaries, they were arresting people getting married. It's just beyond belief. And that's why we got to write it down. It was written down way back then, but we have to keep reminding and reminding and standing tall. And this is, this is what we are doing here today. And the reason that those of us here are doing this today is because this is what you want to be done. You want this, our state to stand with the Constitution and understand that we all have that freedom of religion. So this is enormously important and I want to thank all of these people, all of these good men and women representing you for doing what they they have done. It's a great step forward and I think it'll be a signal accomplishment for the rest of the country as well. They know where we stand. Okay, thank you. Does anyone the press have any questions for, for anyone here? Hearing none. Let's have a ceremonial signing. Ha, ha, ha.